Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 5, Lesson 10, Characteristics of Sound. We're going to start by going over the key vocabulary words you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is audiologist, a doctor who studies hearing and how to help people with hearing loss. Our next word is composing, creating or writing, arranging. Our next word is frequency, the rate at which sound waves are produced, the number of times something happens within a particular period of time. And our last word is intensity, the measured strength of light and sound, the amount of energy or power something has. We are now going to move into today's reading. The children had a great time on the boat tour of Manhattan. They had admired the Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, and the Brooklyn Bridge, and had especially enjoyed waving to passengers on other boats that passed them by. Once they were back on land, Samuel insisted that they all have ice cream. No one protested. They stood on the edge of the curb as Samuel waved his cane in the air in the hope of attracting a taxi. It looks like you are planning to attack someone with a large stick, Jack exclaimed. Both Amy and Ethan burst out laughing. I'm trying to hail a taxi, Samuel explained. Well, I don't know if I would stop, yelled Jack. I think I would fear for my life. Nevertheless, after a few minutes of cane waving, a taxi slowed to a halt. The driver poked his head out of the window and asked, where to? Lincoln Center, Jack replied. Jack had arranged for them to attend an afternoon concert at the Lincoln Center. They were going to listen to an orchestra made up of young musicians from all over the United States. After the concert, they were going to have dinner before catching the train home. The traffic seemed to be moving a little faster than it had been earlier in the day, and before they knew it, they had arrived at their destination. Once again, they paid the taxi driver and piled out of the cab. Immediately, Jack took charge and led them toward an impressive building known as Avery Fisher Hall. Inside the main door, Jack collected four tickets from the box office, and after showing the tickets to a member of the staff, they were handed programs and directed to their seats. Jack had bought tickets in the first balcony to the left of the stage. They sat down together in the comfortable plush seats and took in the beautiful sights and sounds of the famous concert hall. What sort of music will we hear, asked Ethan. Musicians are going to play music from well-known movies. I think you'll enjoy it, Ethan, explained Jack. Which movies, asked Amy. Take a look at the program, advised Samuel. There you will find the title of all the pieces being played today. Amy and Ethan immediately began to scour the pages of the program. Turning to the children, Jack said, As you know, I am a musician who has been composing and playing combinations of carefully arranged musical notes most of my life. Each musical note has a particular sound. When you combine these sounds successfully, the end result is a perfectly harmonious musical composition. So music is like the gift of sound, Ethan mused. That's a nice way to think about it, Amy replied. Jack reached into his pocket and pulled out a small hearing aid and placed it in his left ear. Jack, I didn't know you used a hearing aid, Amy said. Yes, the audiologist I went to see gave this device to me. I should use it more than I do, replied Jack. Today, I want to make sure that I can hear these wonderful musicians. He doesn't wear it when I am talking to him, announced Samuel. What would be the point of that, joked Jack. He was no longer yelling. It was clear that the hearing aid was helping him to hear. Before long, it was time for the concert to begin. The lights began to dim, the musicians appeared, the conductor took his place, and the sound of music burst forth into the air. The orchestra played a number of well-known pieces. Amy and Ethan recognized some of them from their favorite movies. They watched and listened intently as the musicians played. After about 45 minutes, the lights in the concert hall brightened for the intermission and people began to stretch their legs and wander out into the atrium or entrance hall. Jack pointed to the violinist, who was adjusting the tightness of the strings on his instrument. Have I ever explained to you how my favorite instrument, the violin, works, asked Jack. The strings of the violin determine how high or low its sound is. The thickness, tightness, and lengths of the strings all make a difference in the kind of sound it makes. I love when you play the violin, said Amy, smiling. What's that instru instrument called, Jack? Ethan asked curiously, pointing to a large brass instrument toward the back of the orchestra. Oh, the tuba! Another one of my favorites, exclaimed Jack with pleasure. The musician blows on the mouthpiece to produce the vibrations inside the instrument. His fingers press the valves or buttons on the tuba. This changes the length of the tube through which the air flows. Let me guess, cried Amy. The length of the air tube makes the sound lower or higher. You would be a fine musician, 
beamed Jack. Or maybe a scientist, Amy responded proudly. This might sound like a silly question, said Amy, but what makes sound loud or soft? That's not a silly question at all, replied Jack. You see, the loudness or softness of a sound is caused by the amount of energy being carried in the vibration. The greater the intensity or power of a sound wave, the louder the sound. Think about the difference between a drum that is tapped lightly and one that is struck very hard. When the drummer taps lightly, there is less energy applied to the drum. Less energy means lower intensity and a softer sound. When the same drum is struck with greater energy, the sound has higher intensity and it's loud. I see, said Ethan. I have another question. What is pitch? I heard that word in music class, but I didn't know what it meant, Ethan continued. Another excellent question, said Jack. In order to explain that, let me go back a step or two. When an object vibrates, such as the top of a drum, it does not produce just one sound wave, but many sound waves per second. The faster something vibrates, the shorter the wavelengths it produces. For example, the top of a larger drum vibrates more slowly than the top of a smaller drum. The tightness and thickness of the top of the drum make a difference too. Jack took a breath and Samuel jumped in. If the sound waves have a short wavelength, there are many waves per second. If the waves have a longer wavelength, there are fewer waves per second. Amy and Ethan giggled as Jack glared at Samuel. The rate at which sound waves are produced is known as the frequency of sound, resumed Jack. Amy nodded. I see. So a sound with a long wavelength and fewer waves per second, like the sound produced by the larger drum, has a low frequency, whereas one with a short wavelength and more waves per second, like the sound produced by the smaller drum, has a high frequency? Exactly, said Jack. And to answer your first question, pitch describes how high or low a sound wave sounds. Oh, I understand now, said Amy cheerily. High frequency and wave waves have high pitches, and low frequency sound waves have low pitches. So the sound of a bird chirping is a high pitch sound, but the sound of a cow mooing is a low pitch sound burst in Ethan, who was now mooing loudly like a cow. You've got it, said Jack. Variations in sound waves cause sounds with different qualities. Before long, the musicians and the conductor returned to the stage. Samuel, Jack, Amy, and Ethan sat back and enjoyed the rest of the concert. Each musical composition created an atmosphere of its own. The audience listened attentively and applauded enthusiastically, especially when the better known pieces were played. Music from well-known superhero movies, fantasy movies, and Disney movies were particularly well-received. The music recreated magical images and brought back memories for each member of the audience. When the concert was over, Samuel and Jack took the children to their favorite Italian restaurant. The restaurant was less than a block from the concert hall, and the four laughed and joked as they walked to the restaurant and talked about their favorite parts of the concert. I wish we could have brought Elfie to the city, said Ethan eagerly. Jack shook his head. Alfie would have gone crazy. You know all of those loud sounds we heard today? He would have heard even more sounds. What do you mean, asked Amy. Well, have you ever seen someone using a dog whistle? A dog whistle produces a very high sound. The frequency is so high that we cannot hear it, but dogs can. Alfie is able to hear a greater range of sounds, higher pitch sounds and lower pitch sounds than we can hear. As with light, some wavelengths or frequencies cannot be sensed by humans. Oh, wow, said Ethan. Maybe that's why Elfie can always hear a thunderstorm coming before we do. The storm must produce vibrations that are too low for us to hear. Yep, said Jack. Over dinner, Samuel and Jack recalled how they, too, had been taken on a trip to the city when they were young. When we were in the fourth grade, your grandfather's father took us to a concert at Carnegie Hall. That was the day I decided that I wanted to be a professional musician, recalled Jack. Samuel smiled. I remember that day as if it were yesterday, he said. Jack smiled. My life was never the same after that experience. You may now move on to Unit 5, Lesson 10, Google Forms.